Hello friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk. I have really quite an exciting um, report to share with you uh, from the realms of paleontology. And this involves finding an ancestor to, to a whale. And this ancient four-legged whale, if you can say it that way, not only is swam across oceans, it walked across continents. So it definitely seems to be some sort of a transitional uh, specimen. So the way the scientists describe this, and this by the way uh, is a report that uh, is published in the journal Current Biology, basically describe the animal as a, as a cross between a rhino, rhinoceros, not rhinoceros, and a sea otter. Narrow head, long muscular tail, four stocky legs with hooked toes, and webbed feet. So you have hooked toes, got hooked toes with web, webbing in between them. That's interesting. A new study suggests that that's more or less what the walking, swimming ancestors of modern day whales looked like about 43 million years ago. So the researchers unearthed very well preserved bones of this ancient four-legged whale on the coast of Peru. Now this is another important aspect which I will be getting to later in this video. It's one of the discoveries that shows you how little you know. That's very true. You ask one question in science, you might get an answer, but it opens up about four to five, ten more questions. It seems like the, the more that you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And that was a statement by Jonathan uh, Geisler who is an evolutionary biologist and anatomist at the New York Institute of Technology. He was not involved with the study, but nevertheless, he says, this is pretty cool stuff. The findings represent the first indisputable evidence of a four-legged whale from the Pacific Ocean. Previous uh, specimens are found in the, on the Atlantic, the Mediterranean side. This is the first from the Pacific side. And that is one of, the, one of the reasons why this is a really exciting find. That statement was from lead study author Olivier Lambert, who is a vertebrate paleontologist at the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences in Brussels. The researchers found that the whale's fingers and toes were tipped with small hooves. When they assembled the skeleton, the hip and limb structure made it look like a land-dwelling animal but its long appendages and large tail bones were similar to those of an otter, suggesting it must have been a proficient swimmer as well. We now know that they were still capable of moving on land and in the same time started to use their tail more predominantly for swimming, Dr. Lambert says. So the team named this uh, specimen Paraphocetus Pacificus, which means the traveling whale that reached the Pacific. If you if you look at the genus name, uh, Paraphocetus, Cetus, that suffix, of course, refers to cetacean, which refers to whales. And Pacificus is pretty, pretty obvious. Because this is the first record of a quadrupedal whale for the whole Pacific and the Southern Hemisphere, this find significantly increases the distribution of these early cetaceans, Dr. Lambert said. Now, this is, of course, 43 million years ago, and you have to take plate tectonics into account, but way back when, a lot of the land masses, surprisingly, were on the Southern Hemisphere. And now they, over time, move where most of it is in the Northern Hemisphere. Until now, Scientists thought ancient whales left Africa and went to North America before migrating to South America and the rest of the world. But Lambert and his co-authors concluded that the age and location of this new specimen suggests that amphibious whales swam across the South Atlantic Ocean over to South America first before making it to North America and everywhere else. Keep in mind back then that the Atlantic Ocean was not as wide as it, wide as it is nowadays. Dr. Geisler says that makes sense. It would be interesting to look for evidence of these ancient whales across the Pacific Rim. 
and he, he speculates maybe they actually migrated across the Pacific Ocean. That'd be one hell of a swim. We really have no idea how capable these uh, whales were at moving in the water, Dr. Geisler states. No matter what direction they went, he continues, it's impressive that these ancient four-legged whales were able to disperse around the globe with their quote-unquote primitive anatomy, at least for whales, this is a really cool fossil that tells an interesting story. So, this is really cool. Now, what I want to do for the rest of this video is bring in into the discussion Ambulocetus. Ambulocetus natans. Ambulo refers to ambulatory walking. Cetus, whale, natans. So, if you look at the scientific name, Ambulocetus natans, that literally means walking whale that swims. That's what it means. It's a whale that ambles and it's, it happens to be a swimmer. Now, Ambulocetus was probably fully aquatic, it's like modern cetaceans, with a similar thoracic morphology, and it probably swam by undulating its back vertically. Fish go side to side, laterally. Cetaceans, because of the horizontal flukes, they undulate their back they move the tails up and down in a vertical plane. So we have a similar uh, mode of locomotion. Chemical analysis of its teeth shows that it could move between salt and fresh water. It also lacked external ears. Its skull had a long snout and eyes facing sideways. And they're located high on the skull, pretty similar to what you see in, in modern day uh, hippos, hippopotami. So, let's look at the early Eocene, which is about 47.8 to 41.3 million years ago. The short forelimbs of Ambulocetus had five fingers, five digits, on each hand, and its long hind limbs had four toes, digits, on each foot. It had dense osteosclerotic limb bones, suggesting it was well adapted for living in water, but moved slowly probably hunting as an ambush predator. Its pelvis was attached to its spine like land mammals and unlike later whales. In fact, if you look at the pelvic girdle of modern cetaceans, the pelvic girdle is extremely vestigial, meaning greatly reduced and basically non-functional, almost like the appendix in humans. It's vestigial, still there, not really functioning much. So, it had a powerful tail, but it lacked a tail fluke. It was, apparent, it was obviously used for locomotion and probably moved similar to how a modern river otter moves. Pachycetids and Ambulocetus, Pachycetids is another group of ancient uh, uh, ancestors to uh, cetaceans, and Ambulocetus used their large feet and hind limbs for propulsion. Morphologically, the thigh and leg of Ambulocetus were shortened, but the feet stayed large. This resulted in a reduction of lever arm, but a retention of large propulsive surface, indicating that the hind limb functioned as an oar, basically for steering. No, no, that's a rudder, excuse me, or for propulsion. Probably used a tail which way you aim the tail for, for, as a rudder. In later Eocene cetaceans, such as the Bacillosaurids and the Remington Nocetids, the tail gained the fluke and became the dominating source of propulsion, while the leg became more and more reduced and rudimentary okay. compared to Ambulocetus. So the, so the Bacillosaurids and the Remington Nocetids, they came after this is where we start seeing the first signs of a fluke. And then along with the reduction, a great reduction in the pelvic girdle to vestigial status. Compared to Ambulocetus natans, probably overlapping geologically. Uh, Ambulocetus natans was found in Pakistan, this one in Peru. And then, of course, we have to take into account plate tectonics. So let's uh, kind of sum this up here. Paraphocetus had more developed hind limbs, whereas it's reduced in Ambulocetus, 
suggesting that Ambulocetus was further along on the way to becoming totally aquatic. The thinking now is that Ambulocetus walks sluggishly and awkwardly on land, whereas Paraphocetus ambled better on land. So Ambulocetus is most likely a, in the geological record, is younger than Paraphocetus, given the age and the more developed limbs of Paraphocetus. Ambulocetus shows signs of reduced limbs, such as was seen on whales, and then that reduction in the limbs was taken further along in the later forms, such as the Bacillosaurids and the Remingtonocetids. So we have yet another piece of the puzzle in the evolution of whales. This is really cool. So our understanding is improving and, and we're actually seeing the, the process of going from, you know, being good swimmers to shortened limbs to vestigial limb with development of fluke until we get to the modern day forms. So a very uh, interesting study uh, and very important information and helps fill in a lot of gaps in the history of the evolution of cetaceans. Thank you for your time. Hey folks, this is Jim here reminding you to please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos with others. Also remember to click the bell so that you know when I drop in a new video. I also ask that you please consider becoming a patron of my channel and support the work that I do by going to patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, each word separated by an underscore, and becoming a patron. It's asking for as little as three dollars a month, cost of a cup of coffee, to support the work I do and keep my informative videos coming your way. Thank you, thank you for your support.